I'm off to see my mate Steve Brown, top painter and one of the main distributors for Greek-based HB Body Automotive. Top quality refinishes, you supply paint to high-end body shops all over Europe and small-time novice restorers like me because I'm on a deadline to get my 928 GT repainted to exhibit at this year's Practical Classics Restoration Show, which takes place at Birmingham's NEC in less than a week's time. Apologies for the broken voice, guys. Too many late nights in the garage finally takes its toll. Steve. Hi, bud. Oh, there he is. How you doing? How you doing, mate? Good to see you. So this is where it all happens? Yeah, this is uh, Second Chance Classics Body right. Shop. He's been going for about five months now, James. Yeah. We've got our complete paint system in here. And what we're doing, whenever we need to do any training with people, with the products, we bring them in here. Oh, that's so, right. so you've got yeah. your own training company well, as well? Yeah, as such. It's, it's like a small training centre. It's more for our sales team as well. Yeah. So if we have a new product come out, it can bring the sales team in, show them a new product so they know what they're selling. Yeah. And you just, of, you just mixing my paint up now? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the middle can of doing your paint now. Yeah, yeah, come, come See how through. you do it? Come through. This is nice, this console, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beautiful little thing, isn't it? Uh, has this been at the NEC? I don't know. I've, I've definitely seen this car before somewhere. It is a cracking little piece of kit. Maybe in a magazine. I love the grill on the front. It's, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've had a good look around it. It's pretty solid. Yeah. Really solid. Oh, wow. That's the mixing scheme. Does this shake it up, does it? No, no, no. This is the scales. When you're actually doing the colour, um, you'll put the can on there, set it to zero, get your first tint, uh, pour it in, yeah. get it up to whatever level it is. To say, for instance, it was 250 grams, bring it up to 250 grams, and then. And what I'm just looking at the colour scheme here, so that's black, is it? And um, is that green? No, it's a, that's a black. Yeah. And then you've got a dark red, 312, and 307 is a lighter red. Yeah. And basically, this is it. So these ones down here are your 2K colours in the dark blue, and this is all your base coat colours. That's the first tint that's gone into it. 307, 312, which is a lot darker. Yeah. And, and then two blacks. No, just one, just one. That's your 926. And you can just get the match exact, can't you? It's like, you know, I just remember years ago when you'd go and get paint, you'd always be a couple of shades off and you'd have to go back and then they'd try and match it yeah. again, but this is pretty accurate, isn't it? It is very accurate, but you've got to remember it's like different manufacturers' standard shades. You could have, for instance, like six manufacturers lined up there, all the standard shades, and they all look a different colour. Yeah, yeah. Black is black and white is white. I think no, it's no, about no. 50 shades of white, isn't no, it? No, there's, there's loads. I mean, I've, I, I can remember years ago doing a Renault, and we had 22 different shades of one colour. Wow. And that's it. There's basically three centres make yeah, that colour. Yeah, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. He says. You should have more than enough here to do your, your car. Oh, yeah, I'll do the house with that as well. No, Front but door. <laughs> there's, um, there's a base colour for it as well, which is just white. Now, the reason they've come up with a, like a base colour is just for the opacity of the colour, meaning how many coats it's going to take to, to colour. Yeah. So, oh, look at that. There's your colour. Yeah, that looks spot on, man. Basically that 923. Yeah. The reason they're suggesting that is for colour uniformity over the whole vehicle. Now if you add, for argument's sake, you patches a grey primer, you might think you've covered it and you think, great, that's get it outside in the sunlight and you'll see like little yeah. dark patches here. Right, there that's, everywhere. that's interesting to know. So then. it'd be well, well worth you doing a, a spray out card. Yeah. And what completely cover the whole area of what I was painting? Yeah. Or just over them grey primer bits? Um, for colour uniformity, it'd be just as easy just to go over the whole thing. Yeah. The idea is to cover it so you can no longer see that black line. Right. I've come across people that have paint, <laughs> painted the other side, and you're, why? <laughs> why have you done that? But, yeah. So, count how many coats you put over it. It could cover in two could cover in three could cover in four hence why they said about the white base coat mm. the company i work for um they're based in thessaloniki in greece they're a greek company i can feel a little trip coming on here 
<laughs> no, it's one of them in future episodes. I'd love to go over and it's, see how it all works. The factory's fascinating. I mean, yeah. it's, it's pretty much all automated, and yeah. it's it is fascinating well, the way the way the way it's made. I mean, I, I think because H, HB body, not a lot of people know about them, but and I've I've had comments in the past. Oh yeah, it's all mixed up in a little shed somewhere in the middle of Greece. Yeah. No, far from it. Well, it's it's impressive. Maybe we'll make a date, and uh, that's yeah. definitely something for a future episode. Absolutely, be interesting that for the viewers and that, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, so that's going to be your white base coat if you need it. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of liters of that in there. That's your thinners. It's a pure thinner, so it goes in pretty much everything: primers, clear coats. Um, so, so just for coat. argument's sake, Steve, if I was to use like a normal thinner with it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be right. It's it's not so much that. There's no guarantee either. I see. I, we, I can't speak for somebody else's thinner. It could be perfectly. So perfectly these are okay. being tried and tested with that product, yeah. and it's what yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your clear coat, six nine eight. Two to um, one. Yeah, scratch resistant clear coat. Two to one. If you want it OEM finish, five percent thinner. If you want it to go on nice and flat, yeah, ten to fifteen percent. I I don't tend to use thinners in the clear coat because I like to once I've got my grab coat I like to lash it on you don't have to grab coat this really oh, full, good. full coat full enough. coat yeah or if you want to go three just make sure you give it a good flash off depends on what temperature you've got in there normally 23 degrees you're looking at 10 to 12 minute flash off yeah if it's cold if it's yeah not too cold eh? no 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 of course <laughs> not no but you can go 15 20 minutes just to make sure yeah great I'd be interested to see I think I use the uh, Sickens HS is it? Auto clear. You know the purple one? Yeah. I've been using that for years because I've always had great results with it, so I kind of well, swear have, by you it. You don't have to take it. <laughs> no, I'll have it, mate. I'll have it. I'll try anything. <laughs> nah, give it a go. If you're saying give it, it works, go. I trust nah, it. it. it works. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Any problems? Thanks a lot. Fine. Top man. And now I've got the paint. I've also got the arduous task of repairing all these scabby bits before prepping the job. And because I've also got the problem of the cam belt needing replacement and possible catastrophic failure if it goes, I'm low to start the car. So I've also got to transport the car to and from Auto Renew, where I can safely use one of their high-tech ovens before bringing the car back for the long drawn out process of the flatten and the polishing. <laughs> hey ho. And as always, let's get stuck in. You know, many people have messaged in and said, you've got to paint the whole car, Gary. You should take the glass out, take all the trim off and the rubbers. But you know what? I'm just going to remove this piece here because there's corrosion underneath. I'm going to save myself a week's work. I'm just going to paint the car down both sides so it's minimal payout and the job's going to look good and it's going to at least keep some of its integrity. So, again, that's my choice. It's off with that bumper. Here's your fun and games at rusty bolts. Rotted steel. Off with those Allen bolts. And then it's like putting your hand up the back of a cow's arse. Tiny little bolts, scratched arms. Here's your fun and games. And what's all this one about? I mean, look at the size of that. Oh, more mud. This car just keeps giving. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. And as I said before, the front wings and the doors on these Porsches are aluminium. So you can see the way they can road. The rear wings are steel. Well, and I've been putting this off till last. 
I'm not the best in the world, but what I've learned is aluminium has to be completely clean before you weld it. Otherwise, it just won't take. So what I've done, I've cut it back, cleaned it up as best I could out of a clean piece of aluminium. I've just shaped the piece and fitted it in ready for the weld and clamped it up. Wish me luck. As you can see, I could probably do with a few more lessons, but that'll have to do for now. And it's just not the body repair. It's the mirrors, the trim along the wings and the doors that's bonded on with the water trash behind, making for plenty of oxidization and more repairs. These are the things that really take the time, especially when you're up against the clock. Now come on, final push. Now all this might seem tedious and time consuming, but you've really got to be meticulous before you get to the stage where you can finally hit it with the paint. And it's always a tedious case of masking and remasking and getting rid of all the dust, making sure your surface is completely clean. Then it's choose your weapon and fire on all cylinders. Right, let's get this car back, because time's running out. So it's back into the garage. Survey what we've got. Unwrap our handiwork. I'm a Kenny the Glassman on his way. Time is of the essence. A quick coffee. And let's hope these are quicker going in than they were coming out. What do you think, Bill? Good. 
Kelly. So man. So spared on by that. Let's get all this back together again, shall we? So it's off with the wheel again. In with the bolts. In with the clips. And remember that old rusty bracket? Let's make another one out of aluminium. And with that back on. Let's get on with this polishing, eh? Okay, so what I'm doing, um, the clear coat's basically gone off over the last couple of days. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm starting with a 1,000, I'm going to the 1,200, then the 1,500, then the 2,000, then I go to 2,000 with the Trizac, and then the 3,000, which uh, should finish it off nicely before I'll G3, uh, I'll get the machine on it, and then I'll move on to a cleaning, uh, an 83 Maguire's, and then I'll normally finish off with a 3 Ams Finesse. So, um, yeah, I've got my work cut out, but if I do it properly and I take my time, it should come up like glass. Okay, so I've been flattened for about six or seven hours, believe it or not. Um, and I've gone right through all the papers. And as you can see, I mean, let's give you an idea of what it's going to look like. So now I'll just go through all the creams with the machine and I'll just methodically go through it all and try and get it looking like glass. Um, it's a bit kind of dodgy when you're polishing lacquer because you, you make sure you put enough on or clear coats as I should say. You make sure you get enough on so you can basically cut it to death and polish it to death, but, you know, fingers crossed I'll be all right, but I'll put plenty on anyway. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it should take me a few more hours to get it polished and then I'll start putting it all back together because the deadline is 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and it's now 7 o'clock in the evening, the evening before, so, <laughs> again, fingers crossed and let's get stuck in. I mean, just look at the difference in that. Just after one pass with the polisher. And obviously the pad you use on your machine is equally as crucial. I'm just using a medium cut pad, so it's pretty soft. And just move the machine quickly and evenly across the panel, left to right. And be careful of your edges because it's really easy to go through. But I always think this is one of the more satisfying parts of any restoration, when you start to see the fruits for all your labor. about to fit this piece here. This is the only piece of trim I took off the car because people were saying to me, you've got to paint the whole car. And I thought, no, I haven't because 
I weighed up the price of all these pieces of side trim around the windscreen, the back window. I mean, it goes on and on and on. It's about five, five and a half grand just for that trim. And it's the kind of stuff that it's like a light alloy. So no matter how careful you are getting it off, you always do a little bit of damage or bend it a little or get a crimp there or dents in it, which is what I did with the last one. I managed to pick this one up off eBay. I think it was 120 quid. It's brand new from Porsche, but it's been sitting on somebody's shelf. So I hate to think how much it is brand new from Porsche. But the killer was this. The rubber seal that goes along the bottom. That was also damaged getting it off. Um, and it got a little bit hard and brittle. £170. So just with them two there, you're looking at like two or three hundred quid. So just gives you an idea of how much this trim costs. So that's why I've left the roof, which is polished up nice as you can see, and the bonnet and the rear, the rear door. Um, and that's what I wanted to do and that's the reason why. And as I plow on into the early hours and through the night, it suddenly seems like there's a glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel. And with the wagon arriving in just a few hours time, it looks like we just might make it. Well, that's not right. Look at that up there. Leaking oil all over the cars. Well, that's the wrong way around. It isn't Andy the driver's fault. He's doing a great job. You know, I did ask them to come to me second, so I suppose you get what you get. So we finally made it, just by the seat of our pants, skin of our teeth. And now, the car looks good. I'm pleased with the way it looks. So let's get on and enjoy the show, eh? You know, when these cars were new, I read there was less than 38 of them brought over to the UK. And when you consider there's probably less than 50 of these right-hand drive, manual dogleg GTs in the whole wide world, it probably makes this Porsche one of the most collectible and one of the rarest of all Porsches. And was it worth all that stress over the last few days and that final push? Well, we made it. Thank you for watching this episode of Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you all next time.